say hello to the SC300. This car needs to be very, very simple. This was a really good deal, it has a lot of miles. But what my plan was is have a drift car that's low power that I could street drive to the track and use two sets of tires. Look at this luxury. That is so cool. This car just got a lot of HPS little goodies on it. Look guys, I can reach. VVTI head, non VVTI bottom end. We made some progress. Do you guys think I'm done building on this car? <laughs> no. How's it going everyone? We're back with the SC300. We have it here right behind me. And you guys see a lot of parts piled up. See a different motor over there. What's happening? Okay, we're finally gonna do the NAT setup on this car. So if you check it out in its current form, it has a tired old 240,000 mile motor in there. There's a header and an intake. It's really slow. It's still fun, but it's really slow and it's hard to spin the tires. Too slow and I cannot link it. It like runs out of gear and I know it could have spent third so I tried downshifting to first and it's so slow it just like straightens the car out and spins the tires. <laughs> even put a 427 gear ratio in it and it has the ZF transmission in it. Low gearing, still almost impossible to drift it in its form right now unless it's wet. We want to make this like a very low horsepower, fun practice car that Renee can drift, I can drift. If you're going to add that much angle and that much speed, you would have had to start slightly further back on the track. So if you're going to go that, I mean, you might not go that fast next time. It just takes time. I'll try time. the hand brake a little earlier. Maybe. Okay. It's hard to like get that all figured out though, you know? If we have like a friend, probably like a medium level skill set that can drift a little bit already, I can say, hey, you can drive that car. I've always wanted to be able to have an extra car, so this will be it, but more so Renee and I will be using it. Let's go over to the engine real quick. I know I've mentioned this in past videos, but it's been quite some time and we're finally gonna get started on it, so let's go over some parts real quick. This is a non-VVTI bottom end, an NA bottom end so it has better rods and slightly different pistons than the VVTi bottom end would have. Can handle a little more horsepower. This is a VVTi head from an NA, which would be like on an IS300 or a GS300. I chose to use this Treadstone a log style low profile manifold and it points downward to save space because it would work with the stock crossover. And then on this manifold, we have welded shut where you would have your wastegate because we got this really cool Borg Warner EFR with an internally gated rear housing. This is just a small EFR. We're literally trying to make 320 horsepower. It's probably gonna make more than that, but we will find out how much back pressure and how it goes. We might tap out around 320, we don't know yet, but it's gonna make boost so early. So I'm really excited about that. Months back, we did like a refresh on this setup. Hey everyone, how's it going today? I wanted to show you my quick solution to installing these Radium Preston banjos. These are super cool for all the motors that Radium builds them for. It's not every motor, but we're talking about 2Js all the time. Of course, they make it for a 2JZ. You have to get it really cold so that it shrinks it ever so slightly and then you hammer it into position here. This is actually a VVTi 2J NA. You guys know that already, but they do not make one for this. So what I did is drilled this out or marked it. 
actually. I'm gonna get this to press in there. I don't know how well that one will work yet, but I'm confident that it'll work good. So what I use to get it cold is this keyboard cleaner. Turn it upside down and it will freeze it. So you turn it upside down, get it super cold, almost too cold to touch. I would suggest wearing gloves and then get your rubber mallet. So I got this gear wrench, 33 ounce dead blow rubber mallet here. And then I'm going to get it cold and hammer it in. We'll start with some of these gear wrench gloves here. Made it look easy. You should be able to do that relatively easy on your own. I know it would be your first time doing it. It's not my first time doing it, so it was easy for me. Really cool little part. We have those right on our website. If you guys want those for Jay-Z, hop on to radindustries.com, check them out. And then it'll let you have like low profile crank breather set up instead of like people weld on stuff there. I don't know, it was just super clean routing. I'm gonna try this one, attempt this one. I've never done the exhaust side. Typically it's threaded there we modified it like we modify everything so i'm going to try that real quick right now see how it goes this motor's coming along looking beautiful i can't wait to drive this one this motor's ready to go it's got a fresh oil pump if you come onto this side that's a non-turbo lower made it with a gte upper and it has our little adapter if you guys want to get rid of the crossover, I've mentioned it in previous videos, but I'm going to show it in action on my own build. If we turn our attention this way, so that's the engine, we are going to also be upgrading this car with this really lightweight anti-gravity battery. This thing will easily get the job done. I'm going to locate it in the back, but we'll just put it in there for now. We're gonna have that in the back so we have room for intercooler piping and stuff. Deechworks helped us out with some 1,000 cc injectors. That should be plenty to make 400, even 500 horsepower on the 85, but that would kind of where they would tap out around that horsepower level. I don't see that we would ever make that, but you know, just in case. And then I got this master O-ring set. This is a must have if you guys have a race trailer or a shop or you work on multiple cars. This will always save you in the times where O-rings don't quite work out how you want them to. And then we got a bunch of really cool radium parts. Let's dig into this box and see what we got. This is a fuel rail. Wow, making it hard to get to. So it's the radium fuel rail that will fit on the GE lower intake manifold. If we're gonna install that guy. This looks like the universal catch can because we're gonna need a crank breather catch can set up on this car. We're gonna use the radium dual catch can style. And that consists of two of these cans. It has the removable bottom section. So when it's time to drain your catch tank, all you gotta do is slide this off, dump it, and then it's filtered through there so it doesn't splash back up. And then you'll put your AN line in here and put a little filter up there. You guys will see as we get this coming together. These things work really good. You can find pretty much every part that we're gonna show you. If you're interested in that, we got them on our website. And then we're gonna put radium fuel filter in here. We're gonna have to make new AN lines and fuel feed and everything, but we got the six micron filter that we'll do down under the car. We have some miscellaneous fittings and hoses and stuff from radium that we're gonna use. Oh, and then this is a radium fuel pressure regulator. I think we've shown you guys that before, but let's take a quick look at it. I think this is the dual purpose one. Yeah, so this is the regulator and a pulse damper in one. So it'll help keep your fuel pressure very, very, very consistent instead of having like little hits when you're on and off throttle where it will spike up and down. The pulse damper will keep it very neutral and keep you right where you're supposed to be. So it'll idle better and run better and it's a better running vehicle. So we're gonna have that set up on there. And then there's some other miscellaneous things like a bracket in there and some other little fittings. Let's move over this way and check out some other stuff we're gonna do. This is a Rad 160 alternator. We're gonna run one of these guys, so it's a higher output alternator. That'll just help keep the voltage very consistent and it can take higher heat 
instead of running a stock one, we'll just run that. We make this part, they sell those, it's really reliable, so why wouldn't we use it? We need a little display gauge, so this is a BTI gauge, it'll just tell you everything that your CAN bus system on your ECU is seeing. Basically a flat display. A little touch screen though, you can touch it, so that'll help us see the temps and the pressures and RPM if we need it, just the most basic stuff. You don't really need to know what's going on except the pressures and temperatures. Make sure it's healthy. In here, what do we got? I think this is subframe bushing. The reason we wanna do these is because when you're clutch kicking, all the stock bushings will just rock the whole like rear end back and forth. Like, you can actually feel it move and you can feel it in the car. I'm sure it's moving more than you think it is. So to stop that from happening, you gotta put solid subframe bushings in so there's four of these two in the back that look like this and then this will hold the OEM uh, sway bar in place pretty good part they're made by battle version I put these in all my cars so they're in both of my Supras and now they'll be in the SC perfect for drifting or road racing type situations where you want everything to just be secure maybe you guys are thinking stuff like angle kit or dual brake caliper kit stuff like that that's already been done to the car you would have to go back like a year ago and look at the previous videos i had made we have like stance suspension on here wise fab angle kit we have a true dual handbrake so it has like a second set of calipers on there that part was already ready we just need more power now so that's what we're doing now let's check out this tread stone box. I've been waiting to open this for a while. So this is gonna have our intercooler because we always run Treadstone intercoolers. They also supplied us with some other coolers like a oil and a power steering cooler. I believe there's some piping in here like uh, intercooler piping and stuff. So let's take a look, check out all that piping. They supplied us with all the piping we're gonna need for our intake and our intercooler piping. Underneath the piping, we will find an intercooler. Okay, we got a little cooler here. This is kind of big for a power steering cooler, but I think I'll use it for that because of the fact that it'll give you that much more capacity. So a Jay-Z is like prone for blowing up power steering pumps and I'm gonna use a stock power steering pump on this car. And it's only a matter of time how long it's gonna last. So this added, keeping the temps down, this added protection might get me a couple more drift days out of that pump before it decides to fail on us. That's what we're doing with that. Whoa, they even supplied some stainless because we gotta build a downpipe off that turbo and connect it to the current exhaust. And then we have to build all the intercooler stuff. So they supplied us with all the tubing that we're gonna need. So we also got this bellow. So that's for a little added flex that you might need when in between the two different V-bands. Lets you fit it in nicely. Cool thing about Treadstone is they kind of manufacture a very wide range of supplies for fabricating a race car, getting it building your own exhaust intake, stuff like that. So they have all these parts and you can buy the intercooler from them. In this car, we're gonna use this 1235. This is good for more horsepower than we're gonna make, but we figured it'd be safer to have cooler intake temps than not. And it'll fit in this car because it's a pretty big car. So why not put this in there? It's just gonna keep it that much more reliable. So you could just be really mean to it when you're on the track and know that your temps aren't going crazy. Those are a majority of the parts. I think we have one or two other things. One thing I hadn't mentioned, fuel out supplied us with a brushless pump. We are only gonna use one pump because this car is not gonna make enough horsepower to need a second pump. And so the brushless one is a pretty small unit, but it can do, I think, 700 horsepower on E85. So we're definitely in the clear on that one. This one comes with a little controller and then it comes with this little bulkhead so you can wire it into your OEM tank. We got a little bit of custom to work ahead of us to fit that part because I don't know if you guys know much about a SC300 tank. It's just like a steel tank in the back. And we got some fab work. We got a pull motor. If you guys are wondering, what am I doing for electrical? So we got a jumper harness from Panic. Panic makes a couple different wiring things for jumper harnesses and other engine loom type situations. We got with them and we got with Link ECU and talked about some plug and play options for 
this VVTI 2JZ because there's not a whole lot of options out there. And with those two brands, we could make a pretty simple setup. Just get the job done with what we need to monitor the vital things and then still utilize the OEM harness that's already in there. The cool thing about that is he was able to do a couple flying lead harnesses that'll join in that are gonna do like fuel pressure, oil pressure, oil temp, things that we weren't gonna have and wide band. The rest of it, we're just gonna utilize the OEM's coil packs. I know that they're not, they're sequential, they're the batch fire style where they share. We're not gonna exceed the limit of those coil packs on this smaller horsepower build, so we're good to go with that. That pretty much covers everything that we have planned for the car. I'm sure there's a couple details that I left out because I'm thinking of everything all at one point. We're gonna get started on the car today because we got a lot of tear down to do. Take off the front bumper, take out the the motor, take out the transmission, get everything kind of situated of what we're gonna do first. So we got a lot ahead of us, but we have most of the parts here, which makes our job a lot easier. So let's go get started. Yeah. 